Hello, hello! Uh, today we're going to color in this beautiful book by Hannah Carlson. Um, translates to Jewelry Box. Um, it hasn't yet been released in the United States. You can get it at Printworks. Um, and then it is on pre-order on Amazon um, under Hannah Carlson and Jewelry Box. Both of those links will be in the description box down below. So I did a flip through of this book earlier and it's posted so you can go watch that. Um, and today we're going to just uh, color a little bit and chat and yeah. So let's uh, turn to the page we're going to work on. Um, today I wanted to pick something that wasn't too complicated. I want this video to be forever. So we'll just um, start with this one and see how it goes. Um, so far, I have outlined the um, picture with the, a black Posca pen um, and just gotten into those close areas that I would be difficult to do with a paintbrush. And we're going to uh, paint in the rest of the background with acrylic paint. This is just craft paint you can pick up at Michael's or Joann's Hobby Lobby. This is the Americana um, brand, but whatever brand you can find. Um, and we'll just use a couple paint brushes and paint in the background. This shouldn't take too long. Just get a little paint out. Okay. I'm going to take the smaller paintbrush and just get into these little areas, and then we'll take the bigger brush and uh, get the majority of the background. Now my little boys are at school. The youngest is down for a quiet time. I think he fell asleep. He is uh, three years old. He doesn't always fall asleep during quiet time. Sometimes he just down there and plays trucks or with his stuffed animals or whatever he's in the mood to play with. But today I think he fell asleep. He's been a little bit emotional today, which is kind of a hint that maybe he didn't sleep very good last night. So I'm going to try to keep my page in a pretty, um, in the same spot, but if you're doing this at home, make sure you move your paper into whatever position is most comfortable for you. I'm not watering down this paint at all. I want it to be very opaque and just cover on the first go and be pretty uniform. So I want to make sure I don't go over a line that I need later because it will it will be gone. I do have a piece of this is tracing paper underneath just to protect the pages uh, underneath. Get in those really close areas. Yeah. 
a little quiet. I'm having a hard time thinking about anything to talk to you about. I'm just getting this black in. So I started using coloring books about a year and a half ago. I think a lot of us have always enjoyed coloring books when we were little and enjoyed having that creative outlet. I know I did and I liked to draw a little bit when I was a kid and then I got busy in school and high school I was a musician, played the violin through high school, got a scholarship to college, then uh, <laughs> actually when I was at the end of my sophomore year they asked me to switch my major and be a percussionist, which I was going for an education, music education degree, so it really didn't matter what instrument, and it um, I did, so I decided to go ahead and make that change and I hadn't had very much percussion experience at that point I'd had like half hour lessons once a week and uh, for I don't know a couple months so not a lot but when I made that switch as the only percussion major at the school and so I had to play um, in band and orchestra and um, do solos and so I learned very quickly <laughs> those instruments and then uh, graduated with a bachelor's degree in music education and went on and got my master's. Okay, so we're off to a good start. My uh, camera decided that it had too much on it and decided to stop working. So I had to delete some stuff, move some stuff around. and um, So I finished doing the background. Um, I did move on to that bigger brush so that I could cover more area at a time. And then I went and rinsed my brushes out. You don't want to keep um, acrylic paint in brushes too long that it will dry and you'll ruin your brush. So um, make sure you rinse those brushes out right away and put them aside to dry. Um, let's see. I was saying in my video <laughs> earlier, or what I was saying when my camera stopped was um, that I went on and got my master's in music education um, with an emphasis in percussion and when I graduated from um, with that degree I was pregnant with our son who's six years old now and um, so I haven't gotten to play a whole lot and um, especially um, we moved and so I, I no longer had the groups I was playing in and um, it's hard to practice musical instruments when little kids are around and so I needed an outlet um, and uh, in a roundabout way I found adult coloring and it's been um, a blessing for me in my life and maybe we'll talk about more of that later. Um, so this acrylic paint dries really fast so that's one reason that it's a wonderful uh, medium to use. I did get a little bit on my hands but that won't, it's not transferring or anything. It's um, it's pretty dry there on my hands. So I keep my Prismacolors in this case. I think it's a really pretty case. I like that it only has one zipper and then here in there to flip through. I like to keep mine in here because I like to take my coloring different places and I like to be able to just grab it and go because usually I'm packing for uh, five people, 
so I don't have time to I just I just I just need to hurry and grab my stuff because I just don't have time so so I have this book I just got it off Amazon it's just um, a great little tool of color charts and um, they're just blank and you can fill them in I haven't filled in a lot but I do have some skin tones and so I can play with skin tones decide kind of what color pencils work well together and then put them in here write them down and then I can remember so that when I want to do um, a certain skin tone I can just come back to my book and uh, see what one I want to use. Let's go with this one. Okay, so we need, I'll put this up here, PC927, and that's light peach. It's one that gets used often. And then PC1092, which is nectar, also one that gets used quite a bit. And then 1031 is henna, I believe. Henna, where are you? 1031, oh there it is. 1031 henna. And then for our darkest, for the shadows, 1099, which is espresso. <clears throat> I'm gonna start with a base color of the light peach, which is 927. We're just gonna go ahead and put a layer. We're gonna go right over that fingernail with this color as well. And put that down. Alright. So I was saying that, um, well, well, I thought I was recording and wasn't. I was saying that um, about a year and a half ago, I wasn't playing musical instruments very much just because of my home life had changed so drastically. And then, um, you know, I'm not in school anymore and I've got a kid, I've got kids and a husband. And anyways, so... I went to an activity that was for the women of my church and um, they were doing a paint night where we learned to paint an acrylic painting, which I had done like wood cutouts, like painted wood cutouts like for my yard, like penguins and stuff at Christmas time before, but I'd never done like a scenery painting or anything to hang on the wall. And so I went and had a good time, was fairly good at it, probably because I had some experience with paint, paintbrush, and um, I enjoyed it and it was fun and it was kind of relaxing and <clears throat> I don't know if you can see that. Should I zoom in a little bit? Here, let me zoom in. Okay, there we go. So we've just laid down this light layer. And then we're going to move on to our <clears throat> nectar, which is PC 1092. <clears throat> anyway, so I came home from that activity and I thought, well, I could do that. You know, that's something that would be fun to learn how to do more of. So I got on YouTube and started finding um, tutorials to kind of teach myself how to paint and there's some wonderful tutorials. One that I used a lot was the Art Sherpa. I highly recommend her if you want to learn how to do um, to paint acrylic. Go look her up if you don't already follow her. Um, she's an excellent teacher. So I did that and then that led to me seeing other YouTubers like um, uh, Lindsay 
she does lots of crafts. This Lindsay Wynn, who does she does lots of different crafts and stuff, and she was doing stuff with colored pencils, and then I'd see something else, and uh, finally, you know, found that adult coloring books was a thing, and uh, I okay, well, I loved to color when I was little, and that was a lot of fun, so. I went to uh, Michael's, my local craft store, and see what they had. And they didn't have much, but they had um, Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. So I bought it, and I found I, I did some research. I wanted some pencils that would be good, and so that I'd have a pleasant experience, you know. <laughs> and so I found a uh, Derwent Color Soft pencils. And I got those. And I started coloring. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of grew from there. I think like <laughs> once you get one book and try it out and enjoy it, it's just kind of a thing that <laughs> more coloring books keep creeping into my life. You see stuff that's so pretty and you want to color, you want to add to it. And uh, so I would order some books and um, would get Christmas money and stuff for my in-laws and that would help pay for more expensive pencils and different things. And I've just really enjoyed it. I find it very relaxing when my life sometimes is not relaxing. It's a little crazy having uh, three little boys and one of them being autistic. I'm just adding this uh, henna color just where shadows would be or some texture in the hand. Might go back in and add some more henna later, but just kind of starting. It's a process. a lot of pressure when one reason I like the um the prisma colors is that they are so soft that you don't have to work hard to get your pigment and having had played instruments for so long sometimes I have pain in my hands just from overuse for so many years and so it's nice to have some tools that I don't have to work hard for the result. Okay, let's go back in with our light peach and just blend that a little bit. Still not using pressure, just lightly going over the henna, lightly blending out the work. Rotate my pencil once in a while just so that I have a good point, a good edge. Okay. 
Okay, then let's go in with our henna. Mm, I miss that. Let me get a drink. Just water. Oh, I'm trying to drink more of that. It's supposed to be good for you. <laughs> so, yeah, never enjoyed drinking water, but I don't know. I think something that you're supposed to drink that often and that much of should taste a little better, but you know. All right, so we're just deepening up some shadows with the henna. It's still not pressing hard. These uh, fingers that are behind are going to have some shadow and be a little darker. You just want to think about where shadows are being cast. Like that thumb will cast a shadow and those leaves are going to cast a shadow. And what's going on with the lighting. You can go look at different photos on uh, Google or Pinterest and just see what see how lighting affects a subject. <clears throat> learning this stuff a lot of it's just observing and taking note of what you see around you every day being present in in your life Just light, circling. Okay. All right, looking pretty good. Let's go back with our nectar and just blend that out a little bit. You guys can hear the fan of my computer. I hope it's not loud and annoying. I don't know. Maybe some of these quiet areas I'll add some music and some ambiance or something. I'm still learning how to use the editing program, so. But it's kind of fun to learn some new skills. So. I'm not complaining. We find fun to figure out how to add those things. And talking to you is nice too, though a little strange to be sitting here talking in a 
empty room. Void of any people. Be a lot easier if you could answer me. Then I could ask you questions. You could ask me questions. Okay, so we blended that out a little bit. Let's go with our light peach and just blend it out a little bit more before we add our darkest color. Time to go get my boys up. My well, my one boy up, and my other one's home from school. And the next, and the camera stopped recording again. So let's hope it was only for like a second. Okay, so just in case, I am going with the espresso, and I'm just darkening up those shadow areas. I mean, like the camera or the computer or something to make a noise when it's stopped I get coloring and start to kind of zone out a little bit and I'm not I'm not watching the monitor I'm looking at the picture so hopefully so I'm just putting in those darker where the um, hand the other fingers are going to cast a shadow on different fingers so Keeping my touch really light, not pressing. Okay, and then on this side, and then one or two. Just kind of darken this neck a little bit, bring around the side a little bit. Okay. Try to make sure you've got it everywhere you want it. Let's go back with our henna. Just go over that just again lightly. Just blending it out a little bit. Not putting any pressure down. So that we're going to work our way to the lightest color. So just where you put the espresso. Okay, I was hoping to get this hand flesh color done before I have to stop and come back tonight after the kids are in bed and finish recording. You won't notice, but well, you might. You might notice if there's a lighting change or anything. So that's what will have happened. 
Let's see if we can get this hand more or less done. Okay, so to nectar, just going over the same area, blending out that color. Sometimes they do these speed coloring and you don't realize how much time it takes to, to do a picture. I mean, we've done just a little bit of hand here. It's taken us a bit of time. So I don't know if you like um, speed it up or real time. I figure there, there's that button down there that if it's too slow for you, just adjust the speed of the playback and it'll go faster. I know I do that on my audiobooks when I'm listening to a book. I speed it up a little bit. All right, and to our full light flesh and our light peach. Yeah, light peach. This time I am going to press a little bit. This is going to be our final layer on this hand. So I am going to go ahead and press down the tube of the paper a little bit and make sure I'm getting a nice blend of colors. This is a paler, pinkier skin tone. We'll have to do another page with a darker skin tone. But the process is still the same. You just work in those shadows. Skin is so interesting because you could add so many colors into skin. We're obviously not going for a realism or real realistic tonight. But I still want it to look nice. Okay, let's go over this area that we didn't put a this many layers in for time. Okay. All right. For you, I'll be back in a second. For me, I'll be back later tonight and we'll uh, work on those flowers. So. Okay. I'm back. Um, it's a little later in the day. I hope the lighting hasn't changed too much. And um, I've picked out some colors for us to continue 
uh, coloring this picture and I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see a little more of what I'm doing. So we're going to do um, the foliage, the leaves and stems of these roses. And first we're going to start out with Chartreuse 989. And we're just going to give everything a quick little base coat. Look at that, I start right off the screen. I won't be there for long. Just a couple that hang down there. Okay. So. don't want to color the rose green, so I just want to make sure I'm just getting the leaves. Okay. We will get the leaves around this first rows and then um, I'll complete those and then we'll speed it up so it's not quite so tedious for you. So all of them. Okay, so that's the chartreuse. And then we're gonna go for our darkest green which is dark green 908 and I'm gonna put that shadow in. So again, I'm not pressing hard, just lightly. I love this color green, the dark green. I think it lays down so much color and I just think it's a pretty color, so. I'm for it. All right, let's go back up here. Okay, this in. Just putting that dark around where it meets anything else that looks like it's behind or it's coming up from. I think this piece is behind the uh, rose petal there, so we're going to put a little dark there. Where there's going to be a shadow. Or And this leaf is upturned, so we're going to put a little shadow down at the bottom of that turn. And then a shadow down on the leaf underneath it. Okay, same with this one. So, shadow here where it meets the rose, and then a shadow here where it upturns, and then a shadow down here where it Okay, so that's our darkest color. Then we're going to go to Prussian 109. 
And we're just going to lightly, we're going to go over the dark green and then lightly feather out past the dark green. So right over the top of the dark green and then lightly feather past it. Just soft, not pressing, just rubbing that pencil over the paper. Over the dark green. Okay, and of course, the battery is now saying it's low. So I have to stop it in a second and change that. Just feather out that green right over the top of the dark green, feathering it out. this pencil might be that the lead might be broken down in here it just give, has a lot of yeah we're gonna use it as long as it doesn't break off though okay really feeling that lead start to bend. It's definitely broken down inside. sharpen that. Okay. Right up against that bend. Oh, that feels better. Okay. A little sturdier. All right, I'm gonna change my battery just so we don't take any chances and then we'll continue on. Okay, on to our next lightest color, which is going to be a grass green, PC909. We're gonna do the same thing, go right over everything we've already done, those darker colors, and then feather it out. Right over the top and feathering down below. Making sure I get really light at the end of my coloring there. Might lose some darkness at the tip. We will come back and put that back in later. 
Right now we just want a really nice blend. All right, so right over the top. Three-year-old's favorite color is green right now. He usually changes his mind hourly, but he's been saying green for a couple of weeks now. He really likes to paint with watercolors and color. My other two aren't, well, the one will do it if once in a while, but my autistic son, um, we call him Curly, he's got curly hair. Curly doesn't, he, he doesn't like to color. <laughs> Anything to do with holding a pencil or a crayon or, no way, man. He's all about the technology stuff. He wants the iPad and the phone and we let him have it when he's done the work he's supposed to do, but he has designated times of the day where he's not allowed to have it either, and he doesn't like the time of the day. But it's good for him to have to find something else to do. So, I think it's true for any kid. It's harder for him to Go play. Go do something else. See? Okay. All right. Now we go to our apple green, and the same thing. Just over everything. Taper down. Over the top of everything else. And feathering out past. Can you sure we have that nice gradient? Okay, so we've got the apple green. And we're just going over what we already have and feathering it out. And feathering it out. With colored pencils, you just want to go slow and lots of layers. Lots of light layers is what's going to give you the smooth look. So you just have to take your time, 
and enjoy the process. We might not get this whole picture done in this, but on this uh, video, but if that's the case, I will do another video to finish it. But um, all right, so that was the next slide. So we're back to chartreuse, which is our lightest color. And we're gonna go over everything we've done and all the way to the tips of everything. Just blend it really nicely. Then over each leaf, just do the whole leaf and out to the tip. I'm probably putting a little more pressure on this one than I did the others, just that I want that. That'll help smooth, give you smooth. I'm gonna blend everything together. <laughs> motorbike down the street. <laughs> I live in a pretty quiet neighborhood, but every once in a while. Alright. The gradients nice. Yeah. Give me a little more pressure than I did the other colors. My head isn't in the way. I don't think I've gotten it in the way, so. I've noticed that when I color, I tend to put my head pretty close down to the page, which is not great for my posture, but good for my coloring. Okay, now I think we're gonna go back in. This is, you know, you just have to decide what your picture looks like and what you want. I'm going to take that darkest green, dark green 908, and I'm just going to add it very lightly, very little pressure, back into the darkest areas. So here, just make sure we have a nice shadow. There are very few things that I'll go in with black. You can get a good shadow usually without using black. Now when I'm doing metals, metals usually I'll add a little black. Very little though. But anything else, I find just, you can get a good shadow without using black. 
black can be harsh. That's the only reason why. It's just it's not as smooth a gradient. It can be harsh. Let's go down here and a little bit down here. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Look good. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe take that dark right down in here. I don't know that I did that a second time. Just darken those up a little bit. take our nectar color that we used on the hand and I'm just going to go lightly over that fingernail above this line and just give it a little more color I feel like it's just a little bit light or maybe put a little color on the edges there maybe that's what's bugging me is it looks really flat Let's try that. Go around the the uh, outer edge of that fingernail. Okay, and this one back here. Giving the tip and the it's better a little henna just to darken it a little bit more right on the edge. Okay, and then let's go back over the whole thing again with our light peach and just. And uh, buff and smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks a little better. I don't know if it looks better on your end, but it's looking better on mine. Just a little more color in there. Okay. I think that's all we're going to do for tonight, and then um, I'll post another video doing the flowers and the, um, yeah, some more of it. Okay, here we have it zoomed back out and take a look at it. Um, I think it's looking really good, and um, we'll conclude this as part one and look for part two. So, that'll... <laughs> I will see you next time. Bye.